defense staff interacts with retired military officers, stresses need for all to join hands in fighting insurgency. Nigerian Army 82 Division commences 2021 Interbrigade Combat Proficiency Competition. Plus, Cross River State Police Command parades 31 suspects arrested for various crimes. Details shortly. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the news. I am Uduak Etam. The Defense Headquarters says all hands must be on deck in the fight against insurgency and other unwholesome activities in the country. Chief of Defense Staff Loki Rabo stated this during an interaction with retired military officers from the Northeast held in Yola. Simon Asha reports. Insecurity among other unwholesome activity in the country has continued to be a source of worry owing to its devastating effect to the socio-economic development of the society. The Northeast over the years has become the center of attention due to the effect of Boko Haram insurgents, which informed this gathering of retired military officers in the Northeast at Gibson Jali Containment Yola in a heart-to-heart -heart discussion on the state of the nation's security with the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Grabo. The retired officers will be able to bring their wealth of experience to you know, guide and inform and give suggestions that will help in finding a solution to this uh, problem that has been on. And by so doing, he will be better informed and he will take real adequate decisions that will um, impact against the insurgency. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, says the objective is to cross-fertilize ideas with the retired officers so as to tap from their wealth of experience in safeguarding the citizenry. The solution to the Northeast problem will be largely dependent on the inputs of those who come from this area. So we are quite hopeful. I believe that in the coming days, the situation will keep getting better and better. At the end, it is expected that the ideas shared will provide lasting solution to the lingering security situation in the Northeast and the nation as a whole. In Yola, Simon Asher, NT News. Bandits at the early hours of Tuesday attacked the residential area of the Nigerian Defense Academy of Faka, Kaduna, killing two personnel and abducting one. The Academy, in collaboration with the Division Nigerian Army and Air Training Command, have commenced pursuit of the gunmen within the general area with a view to tracking them and rescue their abducted personnel. Suleiman Abdullahi reports. Well, at the moment, our camera cannot go beyond this point, and this is just a few meters away from the academy. But a release by the academy PRO Major Bashir Muhammad has confirmed that early this morning, security architecture of the academy was compromised, leading to the death of two personnel and abduction of one. According to the release, personnel of one division, Nigerian Army, in collaboration with personnel of Air Training Command, Nigerian Air Force, are on top of the situation to rescue the abducted personnel as well as arrest the perpetrators of the heinous crime. According to release also, the PRO has confirmed that cadets in the academy and also other academic activities are going on smoothly, everything is safe. And also the neighboring community, that is the host communities, are also going about their normal businesses without any hitch. From Kaduna, Suleiman Abdullah Hirgachikung, NTA News. In its continued effort to improve the physical and mental fitness, combat abilities and leadership qualities of officers and men of the Nigerian Army, the 82 Division has commenced the 2021 Interbrigade Combat Proficiency Competition. Ifoma Nduokolia reports that the event is being hosted by the 14th Brigade Nigerian Army, Ohafia, Abia State. In view of recent surge in security challenges in the country, the Nigerian Army has become increasingly engaged in combat operations across the country. The Interbrigade Combat Proficiency Competition, apart from promoting esprit de corps among participants, is also aimed at improving the leadership and organizational abilities of officers from the rank of second lieutenant to major, with a view to preparing them for challenging responsibilities. There is a compelling need to continuously train to improve troops physical and mental fitness, combat abilities and leadership qualities with a view to positioning them for all contingencies against emerging threats. General Officer Commanding 82 Division, represented by Brigadier General Emmanuel Mustafa, 
while declaring the event open, noted that the Army and other security agencies are currently faced with enormous challenges, stating, however, that they are not overwhelmed and will not put down their guard. The common trend in all these competitions is the emphasis on the physical and mental abilities of the participants in, with a view to reinforcing the overall com combat preparedness of our troops. Participants at the week-long event who compete in activities such as weapon handling, half cross-country, navigation, obstacle crossing, as well as combat swimming. From the 14th Brigade Headquarters, Ahafia, Ifoma Ndu Okoli, NTA News. Former Chief of Defense Staff and the Pro Chancellor and Chairman, University of Calabar Governing Board, General Martin Luther Akwai, is advocating for various strategies to completely disseminate insurgents in the country. The former Chief of Defense Staff stated this after a familiarization visit to the Cross River State Government on measures to tackle security challenges at the University of Calabar. Paul Ebel has details of that report. The word security may probably be one of the most commonly used lexicons in recent times in Nigeria at various levels due to numerous challenges. Therefore, it is not surprising to see the Pro Chancellor and Chairman, University of Calabar Governing Board, leading a team to the Cross River State Government appealing for support in tackling insecurity and land encroachment issues in the university. Governor Ayade, represented by his deputy, Professor Ivara Esu, who is delighted for the new Pro Chancellor's visit, encourages him to bring his wealth of experience to bear, while the state government provides the necessary support for him to succeed. I'm fighting insurgency, what most people don't realize. For those of us who have been actors and have been privileged to participate in that locally and internationally, uh, it's the worst war you can ever fight. So gradually, I believe as a people, uh, we will look at how to come up with another architecture of how to uh, tackle these things. And we will start it in UNICAL with the support of His Excellency. The two things you have mentioned of concern, insecurity and uh, encroachment, those are your baby. The last uh, security council meeting we had, we resolved that we will set up a naval base at the University of Calabar. Uh, in the chairman was accompanied on the visit by the vice chancellor, University of Calabar, Professor Florence Banku Obi other council members and top management staff of the university. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NGA News. The Cross River State Police Command has continued to win in its battle to reach the state of criminal elements who want to breach the internal security order. The arrest and parade of 31 suspects for various offenses are evidences of the success stories of the command in fighting crimes. Maureen Liu Ajam has more on the report. The 31 suspects were arrested for various offenses, ranging from kidnapping, armed robbery, cultism, intra- and intercommunal crisis, as well as stealing of government property. Exhibits recovered from the suspects include 31 wraps of suspected Indian hem and hard drugs, Motorola walkie-talkie, a live cartridge, 43 pieces of 16mm rods and 100mm rods, Mercedes-Benz 190, Lexus particulars and ATM cards. Other exhibits include a locally made revolver gun, six locally made pistols, a vehicle containing 200 liters of sealed hydraulic oil, substance suspected to be cocaine, an Indian hem, 600 bags of aluminum sulfate. The command, while performing its statutory function, will not tolerate any unwholesome behavior from any quarters, whether individual or group of persons who may want to jeopardize the peace of our dear state. When interviewed, some of the suspects denied their involvement in the crime. Well, I, I know that they, they said I'm a cultist, but I'm not a cultist to God who created me. The command solicits the cooperation of the public to enable the police perform its statutory duties of protecting lives and property, while warning the residents against taking laws into their hands. Maureen Leo Ajom, 
NTA News. You are still watching NTA Calabar News at 7. You can watch this newscast on our YouTube channel at YouTube slash NTA Calabar. A break now, the news continues shortly. Stay with us. As news breaks from the north, south, east and west of Nigeria, we bring it to you. News from the length and breadth of Cross River State is sent to you via this channel. With movers and shakers in various spheres of influence talking to us, we cover an each and showcase our experience in broadcasting. Because it's NTA Calabar before others. You can't get this anywhere else. It's only here on NTA Calabar News, showing at this time, 3 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and 7 p.m. every day. NTA Calabar News, our experience counts. Welcome back and thanks for being there. Medical practitioners say delivery effective, efficient, and affordable healthcare system is possible in Nigeria if government is committed to welfare of doctors. Sarafina Okon Umekwe brings us with the latest happenings between the National Industrial Court and the Nigeria Association of Resident Doctors. The National Industrial Court of Nigeria filed an expert motion Monday, August 23rd, asking or ordering all the striking doctors across the Federation to go back to work and stop all forms of hostility till September 15th when their case will be heard. Now we have visited some hospitals in the FCT and we have seen non-compliance to the industrial court's directive. Every time doctors are leaving, every time nurses are leaving, every time pharmacists are leaving and then we are talking about this COVID era where health workers are not being paid are being paid properly, um, the allowances, the COVID allowances are not being paid. Um, so what that is fighting for is very, very important. I don't think it's actually a big deal that people that are working should be paid. Like we're we actually being faced with different kind of infections right now. And does anybody really care about the health workers? Nobody really cares about them. So for us to go on strike, it's not because we love it. Is because that's the only thing that makes the government to have a second thought. Like I think the government should really look inward and try to find a way to solve the issues with medical practice in Nigeria because it's becoming very depressing that you work in a country where doctors have to go and strike before the government will talk. And the leadership of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors say they will not act until their legal head advises. From the Industrial Court Nigeria, Serafina Okon Umekwe, NTA News. Adamawa State Government has confirmed the delivery of 72 doses of Moderna COVID-19 vaccines. This was made known during the official flag of ceremony of first round of maternal newborn and child health week campaign and COVID-19 second phase vaccination exercise held in Adamawa State. Simon Asha reports. The phase of Moderna COVID-19 vaccine is to consolidate on the successes already gained in containing the effect of COVID-19 pandemic in the society. We have done a lot, even before the vaccines came, so just recently, uh, people have been coming to us, asking us when will the vaccine be available. Now the vaccines are available. This kudos to our uh, community mobilization effort. Second phase, therefore, is targeted at reaching rural dwellers, especially people from 18 years and above, hence flag of the exercise in one of the rural communities in Adamawa state you the party to be precise i was convinced to get vaccinated through media campaigns i will make sure all members of my household are not left out we appreciate the government for considering us at this critical moment the exercise which is to nip in the bud the effect of coronavirus pandemic is also geared towards saving one million lives to enhance the socio-economic well-being of the society. On cholera outbreak, the state government confirmed that seven out of the 21 local government areas of the state are bedeviled with the disease. Adama State has been bedeviled with cases of cholera for the past eight weeks, uh, with, with a total of 73 uh, infected uh, patients. 
But luckily enough for Adama, say we've only heard about seven uh, cases of, uh, sorry, three cases of deaths. The government, however, called on the general public to avoid open defecation and maintain good personal hygiene for the betterment of the society. In Yola, Simon Asher, NTA News. The Appeal Committee of All Progressives Congress, APC, says all grievances arising from the just concluded World Congress in Ogun State will be resolved amicably in the spirit of oneness which the party is known for. Chairman of the committee, Shegun Ojo, stated this at a meeting with some aggrieved party members in Abe Ekuta, Ogun State. Hakim Jimo's report is here presented. The Appeal Committee of All Progressives Congress, APC, is an internal mechanism set up by the APC National Caretaker Committee to resolve grievances that may come up from the fallout of the just concluded World Congresses across Ogun State. The petitioners expressed convictions that their complaints will be attended to. A lot of the issues are internal, really. So I think this is a positive thing. I think it shows you that the party itself is practicalizing what, what they are preaching, uh, which is harmony, peace, love. And I think uh, the appeals committee that have come here, I think they've listened. They've taken all the documents and evidences that have been provided to them. At the end of the exercise, two out of the three petitions brought before the committee were treated while the third petitioner did not show up. There are bound to be a disagreement left and right. All of them had the interest of this party. They want the party to be stronger than it is now. There's no acrimony. You have not seen any violence. I would, the purpose of our being here is to reconcile everybody, allow the party to function properly. The committee has one week to submit its report to the national body of the party in Abuja. The All Progressives Congress Legacy Awareness Campaign Group says the presidential amnesty program inherited from previous administrations has continued to deliver on its mandate with the full support of the Buhari's administration. National coordinators of the MPC Voluntary Think Tank Group, Salio Mohammed, Lukman, Director General of MPC Governors Forum, and Ishmael Hamid, National Youth Leader, MPC Keteka Committee, in a statement re echoed that the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, is being reformed and repositioned in line with the current administration's vision of ensuring that the people of the Niger Delta benefit maximally from the wealth of their land. Other notable achievements by the FPC administration for the Niger Delta region, the group said, include the completed and recently inaugurated headquarters of Niger Delta Development Commission, 25 years after construction began, the resumption of work on the 338 kilometer east west route running across four states of Delta, Bayelsa Rivers, and Akwaibom State, with commitment to completing the first four sections of the road by 2022. The signing of the Petroleum Industry Bill into law by President Buhari on August 16, 2021, the group says the act will make available an estimated 500 million US dollars annually for host communities to deploy for developmental projects. Since the announcement of the death of the Lady Victoria Agui Ronsi, not much has been happening at the home of the former First Lady in Omaha. Cordelia Okoma, who visited the compound, reports that only immediate family members are being allowed into the compound. The Umwahia residence of the departed lady Victoria Guironsi was devoid of the anticipated activities befitting the stature of the deceased as the gate was locked to visitors. Only close family members trickled in, and NTA News was not granted access into the compound. According to a family source, nothing is happening yet. They are expecting the eldest son of the late General Johnson Aguirunsi, Chief Thomas Aguirunsi, to make a press statement on Saturday, after which a condolence register will be opened to the members of the public. Meanwhile, an average urban man on the street is not aware of the demise of two iconic females from the state, Lady Victoria Aguirunsi and Lady Adama Okbara, the wife of the former Premier of the Eastern Region. I'm not aware because... I've not been this time for a while. And before God, I have not, I have no, I have no idea at all. Are you serious? I'm serious. I don't know. I know even aware. Uh -uh. Because of Nakeka, the ride, I don't even hear about anything. That is inevitable. Every man must die. So they should take heart. For them to take heart. 
The God will be their strength. And the time being, gradual cleanup of the state capital has begun in anticipation of the influx of dignitaries and visitors to the state in the coming days. In Omwahia, Cordelia Okwoma, NTA News. The death of an active and committed staff in any organization is usually painful and viewed as great loss. So it was as management and staff of the Nigerian Television Authority Channel 9 Calabar mourned the demise of one of its staff, late in Ogong Jimmy Udo, who passed to eternal glory on Saturday, 21st August 2021. Erika Ivi reports. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every matter or purpose under heaven. Thus was the case of late Enogong Jimmy Udo, who passed on recently in Calabar. Late Enogong Jimmy Udo, who died after a protracted illness, was a native of a back local government area of Akwaibom State. He joined the service of the NTA Calabar on the 12th of November, 1999 and render selfless services to the organization. Enobong Jimmy was committed and dedicated to his duties in the NTA, especially in the engineering and programs departments where he served. It's a big loss to the engineering department of NTA Calabar. Jimmy, that I know, he was a resourceful staff of engineering department. Going back by the days, any time Jimmy is in the studio, MC are working. Even as a supervisor, I have every confidence. I don't need to bother myself to go there. Quite sad that um, a young man like Jimmy is gone. Um, quite active at work and um, humble in spirit. Um, so sad that he's gone so, so soon. It's the wish of every man to be um, live to full old age. I wish you so a peaceful rest and I just pray that affliction should never arise again in NTA Calabar. The wife of the deceased, Mrs. Unime Enobongudo, and some members of the family speak on his life and times. I miss him. It was hard working, it was caring, but unfortunate that around 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, I lost him. Every disappointment is a blessing. Whether good or bad, we should give thanks to him. Well, God give and God take him. Just unfortunate that um, when this thing came, I was not informed immediately. But then the wife just called me barely um, is it three days ago, and I went to the hospital, the Navy hospital he was. I saw his condition. The acting general manager, NTA Calabar, Mr. Ewa Hensho, expressed sympathy over the loss of a committed and skillful staff. It's a real pity thing. We've been following the train of Jimmy's sickness, you know, for the past one or two weeks. It's so sad. That's a hard working staff we had here in NTA Calabar. We're going to really miss a good man that knows his jobs. At the gravesite at Goldie Cemetery, Apostle Paul Godwin prayed for the peaceful repose of the deceased as his remained were committed to Mother Earth. Late Enobongudo died at the age of 47 and is survived by his wife, Unime, two children, and a host of other relatives to man his demise. In Calabar, Erika Ivi, NTA News. May the soul of the departed rest in perfect peace. To end the news, a recap of our major stories. Chief of Defense staff has interacted with retired military officers and stressed need for all hands to be on deck to fight insurgency. Nigerian Army 82 Division has commenced 2021 Interbrigade Combat Proficiency Competition. Cross River State Police Command has paraded 31 suspects arrested for various crimes. That is the package for this evening. Thanks for watching. Good night.